All right. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. What episode is this? I don't know. You gotta stop asking that every <laughs> single episode. There's a number in the thumbnail, and they're gonna see it, they're gonna get mad. Uh, welcome, guys. How's it going? Good, I hope. Good, I hope, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm Ernie. And we're the Radio Tunes Podcast. We are the podcast itself. And we inhabit it fully. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> It's like we've taken it over, possessed it. That's us. That's us. We've taken over your computer. Um, <laughs> Ernie saw Spider Man last week, and he wanted to just give his thoughts real fast in the beginning of the podcast. Oh yeah, so. real, uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, looks really weird. I went to a like you had said you went to a like a Saturday morning screening of blah blah. blah packed. Yeah. I went to a Saturday mid afternoon screening. Yeah. Uh, and again, second week of it, uh, it was still pretty full, I yeah. gotta say. Um, I mean, we had space, but it was still pretty full. Uh, liked it, loved it. Uh, there were certain elements of it that I didn't think I'd like that ended up being really great. Um, we're gonna talk about spoilers too, since we both saw it this time, so. Yeah, so spoilers Full about disclosure. It. Uh, well, maybe I won't spoil everything, but just in case I do. Uh, the person who I thought stood out in that whole movie was definitely Michael Keaton. Yeah, he that was guy good. was super scary. Uh, super, I don't know if they just, I mean, super old, super, super scary. Old. Yeah, super scary. But like, first of all, I love that they never actually called him the vulture. Right. They but don't. no, okay. But I love the simile between him and what he does and why he came. Like, they again, they don't say vulture, but the fact that he's a scavenger, yeah, is, you know, is what vultures do. They yeah, he, they take apart what's left over of a carcass. And that's how they feed themselves. That's their livelihood. Oh, I never thought so about that. So the that's simile cool. between that is really great. Like I'm, yeah, uh, the I'm jacket cool. was brilliant. When I saw it, I was like, I was thinking of what she said. I was like, that is brilliant. Although they never really say whether or not he's, or maybe I missed it. They never say if he was a pilot or anything like that. I don't think so. Uh, the part about that part, or the part about that that was a little weak, was there was some guy who decided, oh, you know, this, you can make some cool stuff with this. And from that, they made these, like, really high-tech weapons. I mean, they skipped, like, eight years, right? Yeah. Like, they... they... And, and they did plant a seed of that, because when when he's walking around, he goes like, hey, man, you can't do that. You can't take it apart with our stuff. You gotta use their stuff. See? Yeah. You use their stuff, and you take it apart. So, that shows that he has a little bit of familiarity with the technology. Like, he knows what does what so right. far, just by trial and error. So I like that part, and like I said, he definitely stole the show because he like they get into him real quick, but his justification is is fantastic. Yeah, and I like it, I like actually like that. Um, he didn't give the typical like, oh, you and I, we're not so different, Spider Man kind of thing. Instead, no, he, I mean, he instead, did, but he's like, <laughs> no, but what, what he did instead was he said like, I'm more like Iron Man, you know, like this dude you look up to. Mm-hmm. Like you don't think Iron Man sold weapons to to bad people well, and all that stuff. He did do that, and then he did the whole thing. Like he's like, they don't care. Like they don't care about us. Mm-hmm. You and me, we're the little guys. Because that's the whole, the whole theme of the the movie um, was more like we're the little guys, and we're yeah. looking up to the big dudes. Right, exactly. And yet, like uh, you know, he he's he's this bad guy, but he still sees himself as a little guy, and it and it personifies itself through the the fact that he keeps his his uh his activities secret yeah and i like that no, nobody was alerted to this between the eight years of all the movies that have happened nobody's mentioned the vulture because he's been stealing from them secretly you know yeah that's what thing. he says right so it's, he's it's, like this is how we've been keeping quiet is we do like, everything like we, yeah. we steal little by little we don't steal a lot or something right exactly and, yeah. and it, i love that i love how they weaved it in but everything the reason i like this movie above like all is everything seemed to make sense his justification made sense. Peter's uh, Peter's uh, inadequacies, his actions always seemed to make sense. The only part that I was just like uh, was uh, the Iron Man part. Mm-hmm. So it takes place after Civil War. He brings him in and he says, "Hey, well, you know, we'll call you." And I know that Tony Stark's kind of a flake, but the the part where you know he calls him and says, "Hey, this guy's going to sell your alien weapon technology uh-huh. on the black market." And then, like the whole scene in the in the with the Staten Island ferry happens, you know the the part in the commercial where he's like holding a boat yeah, together, holding the boat together. So the and this is spoilers. He's like, so so 
Spider-Man tried to stop and catch the vulture for selling the guns. And then afterwards, you find out that Tony Stark called the FBI to handle it. Yeah. And then he comes back. He's like, that's why I called the FBI. You know, and then you screwed it up, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you called the FBI Uh to handle the export of alien technology. The stuff that, like, can take out half a building, which earlier in the week took out half a building. Yeah. And, you know, destroyed... Uh, you know this grocery store blah, blah blah you sent the FBI with regular weapons to handle that yeah I don't know I mean that's not a big black eye to the whole movie but it just bothered me where I was like really Tony like you sent like you couldn't just go with your drones and take it out um you know it just I don't know it was that that part was dumb and but it did fuel the rest of the movie and uh I did enjoy the shocker I did enjoy him. That was kind of cool. That yeah, I, I liked the little subtle reference to him. Like yeah, he, I guess he wasn't in, in in that part where like they're in the school bus or whatever, right? He punches him through a school bus or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he does actually fight him. But uh, I like I like the reference because if <clears throat> they did this shy, they did this really cutesy thing. If you remember, and this is maybe something I caught that maybe I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else catch it, but in the in the movie or in the movie in the cartoon. Shocker wears like this weird red vest, and then he has like this yellow mesh, like this quilted over. look on his yeah. arm. Yeah, and the guy, one of the guys, had that. Yeah, but you know, spoilers. He he ends up like using those weapons. The guy ne- it, the guy after him has it too at one point. Yeah, he's like so the guy that shoots shoots at Spider Man, and then the Vulture gets mad at him. He's like, "Don't shoot those weapons out in the open." Yeah, and he's like, "You." I hate it when you get on the van and you start shooting those things off and say, hey, I'm the shocker, I'm the shocker. And then kind of um, out of the blue, he kills that guy. Yeah. And then he gives the gauntlets to somebody else. He's like, there, now you're the shocker. Yeah. The guy that was originally shot was wearing a jacket that had that yellow mesh on it. I know. Uh, and the, I was like, the oh, guy, that, that's the shocker. But then when he kills him, he's just like, okay, now you're the shocker. And I was like, oh. But then the other guy wears it too. Does he wear it? Yeah. There's a uh, I, I I tried to notice all the spots where there was like yellow because this movie had an abundance of yellow in it. Oh yeah. I don't know what the, I don't know thematically what that was about or. I didn't. I, I thought it was wearing like a blue sweater. No, he definitely wears that same thing too at one point oh, because okay. I I remember thinking like so they just have a bunch of these fucking jackets somewhere or something like. Or maybe it's what feeds the weapon. I don't I, know. Yeah. Either I, way, I, I thought it was it. cool that they they took that and then they just kind of switched it around. I thought of a. I thought of something else that I didn't like about the movie. This is another, like, nitpick. It's not really a big deal, but... Spider-Man has, like, this thing that comes off his chest. The little drone, yeah. It's like a little drone. Yeah. And as soon as that thing popped out and he started looking at it, I was like, I really hope this thing doesn't, like, do these little beeps like R2-D2 in response to what he's saying. And it it did. did. And I was like, that's, like... Yeah. It's a little... I, I don't like that Tony Stark's technology is getting to the point where it's, like... Like, it's almost like Star Wars level, you know? Like, I still want it to be a little bit... I, that, that's why I said this is a nitpick. I understand, like, I'm, I'm, I may be stretching it here, but, like, to me, that's just kind of like... You program this little bug to have, like, <laughs> yeah, like you a know personality what? or, like, it, it, it's cute or something? Like, what the fuck is that? I, I don't know. Yeah, to be honest, one of the things that I was... I didn't love, but it's not breaking the movie for me, was the, the stupid AI in a suit. Mm-hmm. I personally didn't like Karen. Oh yeah. But I understand why she was in the film. Like she's a sub she's she's like this subcategory of Jarvis. She's there to for him to bounce stuff off and she's like his program in the suit. I get yeah. it. It's because Spider Man's suit is a, like a smaller version I of I did Tony's. like I did like that though, how at one point, um you know, like they say it in the trailer, he's just like, Oh, I'm gonna take the suit away from you because you're a piece mm-hmm. of crap or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You screwed uh, the pooch. Yeah. I don't really like that he keeps saying that. What? He keeps saying he screwed the pooch. I was like, I, uh, yeah. all right, whatever. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. I thought of something else I don't like. But that, that I'll get to that later. Um, they take the suit away, and Spidey has to work with now just his regular web shooters and his... That like, was cool. And, like, his sweater with, like, the... I, yeah. I, I love that, actually. I really like that they did that. Um, yeah. And apparently that scene where he gets... Um, he has all that shit on him. And he's trying oh, to, that's a famous comic book. Yeah, that's uh, like a, that's like a cover of of Spider Man issue something. But yeah, him, him like struggling to get out of like that debris. It's a very famous cover. I yeah, was yeah. like, that's cool. At least they 
you know, tried to draw something directly from the comic books this time. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I surely have done in the other ones, but um, last thing I was gonna say, last this has to be the last nitpick. I swear to God, <laughs> I just don't like how the movie ended. And remember, you liked the movie. I did. I just okay. don't like the ending. Uh, wait. Uh, where he has a suit on. And then it, it pans and you, it shows that Aunt May is behind him. And she says, what the F? And that's she says, ends. what the F? And then it cuts her off and it like... I yeah, was just, I don't know if I like a lot of people knowing that and he's then it Spider-Man. Just, and then it, no, I don't, I don't mind that. It just The fact that it just cut to like Ramones. I was just like, that was... Like, well, this movie was so good and I was like, why did they do that? Like, it just seems so... It seemed kind of out of place to me, but sure, you know, like it worked, whatever. I think thematically it worked. I I don't I wouldn't have ended it like that, like you said. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen an ending. Like maybe this is a little nostalgia, but I really liked in the first one where Spider Man just sw- like he was swinging through New York City at the end. Of, he's on the American of flag. That part was a little cheesy, but I liked at the end where he was just swinging hey, man, around. It was being after nine eleven. They had to do it. All right. Okay. People were sensitive. They had to throw the. They had to throw the salute to the American flag in there. America. Um, and I like how they made fun of those movies. Did you catch that? What do you mean? Where, you know, when he's pulling the ferry around, <laughs> goes, yeah, Spider-Man. Like that part in, I, I forget which Spider-Man, where they're like, man, you mess with him, you mess with all of us. Yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, because everyone knows New York. And then they York. made fun of it. Everyone yeah, exactly. knows New York is exactly. like that. You mess but with this... one of us, you mess with all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't like that part in the other one, but in, in the trial, in the Ferris, or the... Staten Island Ferry, when he tries to put the thing back together, like, yeah, Spider-Man. As soon as that happens, it all goes to part again. And then Tony Stark saves the day, and then they go, yeah, Iron Man, yeah. yeah. So it's like, that's, pretty that's funny. super fleeting. Yeah. I like that it was, I mean, I consider it like a little jab at those movies, it, which it, is funny. It was, um, it had a good amount of that kind of comedic stuff in it, too. It didn't really overdo yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The end of the movie, too, kind of like, I was telling my friend this, it just felt like it was moving like a mile a minute. Like from where yeah he, the ending he's just yeah. like all right we're you uh meet me in the bathroom I need to talk to you okay we're going up to, to Tony Stark's place like a fucking two hour ride we're or something d- we're the Avengers now you're yeah. an Avenger and then he's just like you want the suit or not he's just like no, no I don't no, want the suit he's oh, like all right uh, me and Pepper are getting married okay that's yeah. happening now and then yeah. it's okay okay you're back home now okay here's this bag I decided to give you back your old suit oh by the way want... I, my name is MJ for real okay so you can go yeah that way. I was like what is this? oh this <laughs> shit's happening I can't I can't <laughs> process all this what's going on but yeah for for the for the most part, like, uh... There's nitpicks, but I think overall the, the story was great. I was gonna say, as that was happening, there were certain times where I was just like, alright, so now it's gonna end. And then it didn't, and I was like, it just fucking keeps going. <laughs> like, he's just walking down the stairs, I was like, alright, cool. Now it's over. And it's like, no, he keeps going, and then it finally ended with, uh... What the... Yeah, that's why it was kind of surprising to By me. By the way, I'm really tired of that joke of, wow, Aunt May's really hot. I'm really I'm tired of that. I was tired of that joke in Civil War, and I didn't need to see it three times in this. You know, movie. I need to watch uh, at least the Spider-Man parts again in that movie because I don't I don't remember <laughs> a, I don't remember them mentioning his aunt at all in that movie. What are you talking about? In Civil War, I don't remember them mentioning Aunt May at all. Yeah, Tony talks to her. Oh, okay, I don't remember that I'll because he talks to her before he goes into Peter's room. Mm-hmm. And then they have, that's where they have the rest of the, the discussion. But uh, did you notice that the, that scene where, uh, like, Iron Man and, and Peter never fly around together or anything? No, that didn't happen. So the, no. that part in the trailer was just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, I think Cool, it was, I guess, you know, in a way. Like, I guess it was to throw you off from the ending. Yeah. Because in the ending, he's supposed to be like, you're going to be an Avenger, right? Yeah. So you would, if he was an Avenger, you would see that scene at some point where right, he's flying true. around with the Avengers. He's like, nah, I want to be more of a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Also, real fast, I read that, like, the director of the movie or something said, uh, he's just like, oh, just because her name is MJ or whatever doesn't mean that's Mary Jane. So I was like, what the fuck? Well, that's fine. But for all intents and purposes, she's going to be Peter's... I mean, it's it's pretty placed but in maybe this movie. Not, but gonna... maybe not, because what he was saying was just like, um, she was named MJ is just like, like an homage to the character or something. Okay, well, so that's, like, that's may, fine. Maybe but... Mayor Jane doesn't even exist in this universe. Yeah, and, and that's like... what I mean. For all intents and purposes, this might be his love interest. Right. Which is fine. It, she can be, she could, like, he can make her fall in love with Gwen Stacy later on. Mm-hmm. 
and you know Gwen and MJ will switch places. Maybe there's like, a dude. This one will Maybe die. there's a dude named Mary Jane. Maybe no? there's a dude named. He's uh, a redhead. Martin, I know freckles and whatever. Martin James. Yeah, and that's the new one. That's Kirsten fine. Dunst. Oh god. Okay. And then the last <laughs> thing I want to say about it is uh, both um, the guy from Broad City, uh, Hannibal, Burries, right. Burries, and uh, what's his name from Derek's comedy? Those Donald two dudes. Glover? Donald Glover. Um, Oh yeah, how'd you feel about those cameos? Okay, so the cameos were were they really cameos? No, they had this part to fill of uh-huh. this coach that looked this coach that has to play these Captain America tapes, and it, it was fine. Those Hannibal Captain- does Hannibal does that character really well, like a depressed dude. He does that fine. He wasn't like super funny in it, other than he's like, "Hey man, get back here!" Boom, yeah. done. Now the part with Donald Gl- Glover. Um, that character seemed to be played pretty straightforward. I'm gonna put a screenshot up. It bugs me because <laughs> is it has, because of his eye? He has like his yeah. He has like his eye like half closed the whole scene. I was like, what is that dude? Like, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be like a, a I'm I'm like I'm like kind of still drugged out kind of look. Yeah, and I'm it, like this gangster. Bro. It looks bad. I I don't think it looks good. It was a choice he made. Whether or not it's actually good, I think is left to. I thought it was fine. You want? And I liked him. I think there is something happening there because remember he was buying like he, the the way he's worked in is he's buying a gun from these guys that work for the vulture and he's just trying to get like a regular gun mm-hmm. and they're trying to sell him these space guns or whatever. So right when they're gonna shoot that guy because they uh, they think uh, because Spider Man's there he's like oh you called the police and he's like hey, hey whoa whoa and then Spider Man jumps out he says shoot me don't shoot him. And so the next time they meet, he's like, "Hey, that was really cool of you to do that." And I think for some reason, I think I that, that had changed his ways because what he was doing was he was getting groceries for his little brother or something for, like that. I don't know something about the delivery of it. It sounded like he only had five seconds to film that shot because he was just like, "Hey, the other day that was really cool. You he shot you said hey shoot me instead of you, and that was really cool. Hey, by the way, I have a nephew in here, so you might want, uh, let me just tell you where the bullshit is going to be. Like I I don't know it just." To me, it stood out like it, it didn't really fit into the whole movie. But maybe it's just because like I see somebody like like Donald Glover or Hannibal like in these in these parts in this movie, and it just takes me out of it because I'm like, okay, I know, I know who that is. They're spo- yeah, like they're supposed to be like a comedic actor or something. Like, I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe that's all it is. Yeah. I, I personally liked uh, both those scenes. I don't know. Uh, if I, I really, I really enjoyed the Captain America little. I, I like those parts too, actually. I, those I, were very. It, it felt. It felt real. Yeah, it did. It, I, I like how um, um, like this one, like how we were saying, it's hardwired into the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. I really like the the connections it made. Like, yeah, it just. It I did, mean, there's a huge connection in that. That's what the Vulture's doing. He's cleaning up uh, the first from the first Avengers, and then like even the girls are talking about like, there's like who would you f Mary kill. From the Avengers. Oh yeah, you know? that was whatever. That I mean, it just means that they, these people exist and they're like have celebrity statuses. You know, yeah. people talk about. No, them. yeah, I, I get that. Um, and it feels, it feels, it doesn't feel forced. It feels kind of natural, to be honest. So real, real quick, to um, I know I keep saying real quick. I know we're, we're really not trying to spend too much time on this the, because the I know post, we already talked okay, about. Okay, the post credit scene, Vulture is talking to some guy. Yeah. Apparently, that's Scorpion. Yeah. You knew That's that? what I heard too. Okay, I heard yeah. that. I didn't really. I was like, "Where did they mention the scorpion? I, well, Maybe he has a tattoo." It made sense because that was another character that I was just like, "This fucking guy is like in everything crime based." It's I a, might just have he's, that a, he's in face. Breaking Bad and he's in Better Call Saul and he's like in he's like in everything crime related basically. So, um, you know, it's funny. Cindy asked me. Uh, Cindy's my wife. Uh, when we went to go see it together, she told me she's like, "Why wouldn't the vulture tell him?" who spider-man is and where they are involved he wants to fuck him up himself maybe that was my initial response Uh uh-huh thinking over it a little more uh it's also probably his only bargaining chip in there yeah like you know he could use that later on to be like blah blah blah. plus the other thing was like you know what spider-man did save his life yeah yeah Uh, you're saying what are we supposed to get out of that 
Like, yeah, like, like what are we supposed to get out of that? Is I'm that, just glad we... it wasn't like fucking Thanos's body part because I'm so okay, tired. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I'm so tired of like seeing it, like no, waiting because... till after the credits and then it's just like <laughs> fucking Thanos's lips or something. And I'm like, okay, He's like, he goes and gets his cod piece. I was like, I guess yeah. I have to take care of this myself. Yeah, I'm like, okay, when are you coming out? Because it's been like 700 movies already. Uh, the reason I think that part was important was for two reasons. One, I mean, throughout the entire movie, you're told that he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. But he keeps mentioning mentioning his family finally when you see his family you understand why he does it and everything and even when he's telling peter he's like this is this is the kind of person that this is what i'll do for my family spider-man saved him and that you know that keeps him with his family i mm-hmm. think i think that that shows that even though he did all this bad stuff he did it f- he's like, still a family man he's still, he's still, a family he still man. had a, you know he still have had he a, still has some sort of heart you know yeah. what I mean? What does that What does that say? His heart was in the right place. His heart was in the sort right of. Place. Yeah, and like, he's like, yeah, I'm like, gonna you, kill you, Peter. You, no, even when he killed that shocker guy, yeah, he was just like, I thought this was the stun the anti gravity gun. Yeah, he yeah. was like, I didn't know this was gonna kill him. Like, so he's maybe at heart he's not really a murderer, and that was just the no. Point. But when he understood that Spider Man was gonna, you know, ruin his family, yeah, that's what happened. He says, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna give him the dad talk. <laughs> yeah. I like that part. That was really good. Yeah, nobody expected that twist probably because Liz was black, right? So um, they I didn't think... expect her to have a white father. That is true. Yeah. Although, like that whole scene where he just like, it's great because I always hated when these like bad guys can't figure out who the good guy is, uh-huh. like because they have a mask on. But he's like, you know. Have we met before? Like just talking to Peter. Oh, your wife said like, he figured it out in the he car. He figured it out in the car because he's he's, he's not even he. I'm, I'm assuming he wasn't even a college grad, but he figured it out because any idiot can tell. Right. Yeah. You know, he's like, hey, you know what? He's like, we're blah blah blah. And you went to DC, and Spider Man was in DC. You kind of sound familiar. Blah, blah blah. He just put it together. It wasn't like the whole like Clark Kent with glasses. Yeah, that that like... still bothers me. But you know, overall, just my last thing on it. it this this. The guy Tom Holland plays, and whoever uh, the guys who wrote it wrote a Spider Man that felt like he was right out of the comic books. Right. Sarcastic, nervous, unsure of himself, struggling with his fam, uh, his family, his social life, and he seemed like a kid. Yeah. Which was great, you know. And, and that, the whole and I love that they highlighted the fact that he's like, I'm gonna put my backpack up there and stick it to the wall. Because that was always a, a yeah. part in comic books. It, uh, just, for... just like the whole suit like explanation, I was like, I'm glad that they have something, um, like these unanswered questions that th- that I had from the last movie. Like, oh, he he actually does run out of web cartridges sometimes. Oh like, yeah, he popped them out a couple yeah. times and reloaded them. Just like in the cartoons I, when he would yeah. run out, and sometimes it would, you know. I thought that not only that was good, but like the whole thing about showing that he puts his costume away, it, it's it was and they such... steal it at one. They steal it a yeah, bunch of times. Yeah, they steal it but if you've read a lot of comic books uh, of Spider-Man, there's always he, a lot of times they start with him having these monologues in the very beginning, where he's either retrieving his 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 uh, stuff from a long day uh-huh. of like web slinging or whatever, or he's starting his day and so he sticks his like his, his little knapsack of web up like in a in a place where you can't reach or anything. Yeah. So I mean, those were tiny little things that I liked about the movie. So it just felt more like. Wow, this is the Spider-Man movie I was meant to see when I was a kid. Oh yeah, and, then, and I love that he's fifteen. And then, um, so like he, he leaves Liz at that dance to go fight the Vulture or whatever. Yeah. When he sees her again, I was like, she wouldn't be way more pissed off at him for le- like, I would assume like homecoming dance or any kind of dance is a big deal for a fifteen-year-old girl, and like, the fact that he just left her there isn't that kind of embarrassing. Like, I I don't know, I just felt like. The next time she saw him, she would be like, fuck you. Like, not like... She was kind of nice to him, basically, is what I'm saying. She's just like... I think she was because this, the scope of what was happening to her... Uh-huh. She had I bigger problems. It just overshadowed it. Yeah, okay. Sure. Also, if you look at it from her point of view, I would just have been pissed off at her dad. Because he's like, I gotta give him the talk. And then right after you gave him the talk, he's like, scared shitless. And then he's like, I gotta go. It was like, what did yeah, my dad say to you? Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, just, just looking at it from her perspective, mm-hmm. that's what I would have taken from that. And by the way, I didn't like... I mean, that whole part where he runs out and the shocker's waiting for him, I thought it was kind of dumb. He's like, there are 50 million exits to a school, but he got the one that Peter was going to sneak out of. He's like, 
How did he know? It was, but, it was just the gym, though. It was in the gym, but remember, he runs out to get his, his web shooters uh-huh. and his costume, his, his old school one. So he could have come out of any exit, but boom, movie yeah. magic. He's right there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but, you know, that. that again, those are small little whatevers. You I, know, it's I also thought that the girl that played Liz, too, some of, maybe just some of her lines, they were just a little too, like, to the point. It almost just seemed like... Uh, she was she was in a very... I don't think she was an amazing actress, you know. Maybe. I don't think it was that. I think she just didn't have a lot to work with. I mean, her lines were were essentially, "Hi, Peter. Peter, you're not going to come with us." Yeah, Peter, are you going? Peter, to are that, you doing this? Are you going to that dance? I today, think most or... of her dialogue started with Peter. Yeah, you know, just... so it's like, like the the little buddy he had had way better stuff. Like that whole delivery of. Um, you know, when he's helping Spider-Man on the computer and he goes like, what do you, and then teacher busts him. He's like, I'm looking at porn. And yeah. it's just like, there's some playful things that you can do with that. So, I mean, she's probably the, she's the love interest. And yet, like, we know absolutely nothing about her. It's just, that. You know. That's why I said last week, like, I don't think she plays like a super major role. I know she does because her father, obviously. Yeah. But like her as a character, I was like, she doesn't really do much. You don't really know much about her, you know. Yeah, and I think it's because she wasn't going to there's not a lot of investment there. You know. Yeah. She's she's here, she's moving upstate, blah blah. blah. She's basically out Yeah, cuz she's not going to be in the next one, I assume or exactly. anything. I, it's know. more about MJ Martin James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a dude. Anyway, the other thing from last week that you told me was uh, you told me, "Hey, there's this great game on Switch that I should play." Yeah, um, uh, Mighty Gunvolt yeah, I actually bought it. I haven't beat it yet, so I was thinking maybe we could talk about it next week when I beat it. Okay. But it's uh, it's basically just like a Mega Man game. I, you know what? It actually reminds me a lot of Darkwing Duck. Like how I you, can see that. Yeah. How you can hang on stuff and shoot. It's mm-hmm. like it's um, it's just very like it really does feel like a Nintendo game. I know like a lot of games try and emulate that whole like retro look or whatever. Mm-hmm. But gameplay wise, I think this one does a pretty good job and um. I don't know who you played with. Did you play with Gunvolt or did you play I with... I played with Gunvolt. Gunvolt yeah. has his system... I think it's from his games where if, you, if you're if you shooting people up close, mm-hmm. it starts a combo. And yes. the more combo you get, um, it like makes them stronger or something, which is pretty cool. Uh, no. It starts a combo. It does that little combo thing. I don't know about making a, a me stronger. I know at one point I had a little flame around me. Yeah, I had like a, I had like a red shield around me. Maybe that was something different. You had you played with back then? No, I played with Gunvolt. Okay. He has like yeah, a red he, shield. Yeah, I, I didn't him. see any difference with that. Um, you know, I, I beat the game. To be honest, you're gonna beat it, and you probably already. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you've probably already gotten your fill of the game as far as like that goes. Uh, it's just really. I will say this: It's really fast. It's really fun. Everything feels very natural. I, yeah, I would say like I, like from what I've played already, I'm like, if you have a Switch, just fucking get it. Oh it's my like, gosh, it's only it's, great. it's only ten bucks. Yeah, it's only ten dollars. I went to Starbucks the other day and I spent more than that. So like just <laughs> just to give you a frame of reference, and, and you know, it's like, great because it also provides challenges. Like after you beat a level, you can go back into the level, beat the challenge, and then upgrade yourself a little more. Yeah, the ch- but you don't really have to. What do the stickers do? I don't know what the stickers. I don't know what the stickers do. Okay. I just blew past them because the main crux of it is the the bigger power that you have, the more you can add to his arsenal. Okay. That you can customize. And like what I did right away is I upped his attack power right away. Yeah, there's so I didn't have to there's dodge. There's a too lot much. of custom. Like you can customize. The trajectory, how long the bullet stays out, how yeah. fast it goes. You can even, uh, even the dissipation. So like after you shoot it and it goes away. Yeah. If it disappears, you don't take an energy tree, but you can have it go into like four squares and stuff. Yeah. And then you can like ricochet it off the walls and stuff. There's a, and you can add elements. Uh, but again, what I did right away is double the attack power because yeah. I'm like, because it's, it's actually that. pretty hard. Like it's the, hard if you have just the regular attack power. Yeah. Once you get two, it comes very natural. The first guy I beat, I, I the first boss I went up against, I died, and I was almost like, fuck, I don't know if I could beat this guy. <laughs> like, uh, uh, the checkpoint I had, basically. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, but even, even um, like, who, who was the first guy you played? You said the sniper dude, right? Yeah, he's, like, in a, almost looks like a nice building, like a chateau, almost. And he's yeah, like, he was definitely, he was definitely one of the harder ones to get, but once you start memorizing the pattern, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Um, I told you my first dude was the, the constructor bot or whatever. 
Okay. Because it doesn't really give you, like in classic Mega Man's, you can pick any of them to start. Yeah, I like that right? about that too. In this one, it's the same thing. It's it's just, you can, you can pick any of them right out of the gate, and I picked the construction bot one. Um, he was pretty straightforward. It's like a lot of them have, a, uh, like some of the... Um, some of the bosses have weak points. Uh-huh. You know, he had one right at his face, so you could only shoot him in the face. Gotcha. So you had to be at some level to hit him. And, uh, you know, that's pretty standard for a lot of Mega Man games. Uh, with that one, you just needed to learn to dodge what attack came out. Mm-hmm. And once you did it, it was just practice, practice, practice. One thing I love about that game, the retry system. Yeah, it doesn't have that's lives. That's great. It doesn't have lives, so you just get to... Re- like, the more you retry, it just, it just has a counter there. It has a penalty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And... Please, for the love of God, indie game people, please use that because I'm so sick of the lives thing. I mean, the I think the only reason we even remember what lives are is because we just we just played Crash the other day. Remember? The yeah, I mean, collection. oh my gosh, that uh, I remember when we were kids. You got the PlayStation, but I don't remember you ever having Crash. We Bandicoot. never, yeah, I never played it when I was little. But according to a lot of people, like I know we're switching topics really fast, but. Um, like Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is apparently pretty faithful to the originals. Okay. Yeah. So and like and from what we played, it was super fun. It was like, great. I was having a lot of fun playing it. It was um. Looks and by the way, really nice. And by the way, really since great. we're gonna talk about Gunvolt next week, we'll just save that for okay, next sure. week. Um, and this is actually a, a, a good topic because it's just coming from some people who never played the original right. and now are just playing this game. Uh, I like that you called one of those like apparently in every set of levels. There's one temple run level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's like a level where you get on an animal and you can, you can only move left and right and you have it's, to jump over stuff. Right, so it's temple run or minion run or whatever iteration of it you, yeah, you play. Right. Uh, I think it still holds up. It seemed like fun. Yeah, there was just something about like... Uh, I'm not sure if this is the case, but so you know like in... Obviously on PlayStation, the hardware was a little uh, older, right? Yeah. The level would 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 render out and load as you were going, mm-hmm. so certain things were timed like uh, very specifically, mm-hmm. so that you can get your jumps in. Right. In this new one, the whole level is loaded at the same time, and from what I understand, everything's rotating and going at the same time. Oh, so okay. certain like cycles or whatever don't work Anymore. that were in the original, oh, right? Gotcha. You know? So when you start the level, the person is. A- picking up or lifting this barrier at the end of the level already already. yeah it doesn't trigger the sequence when you show up yeah as far as i'm concerned because there there are some jumps like there were levels like that where i i was like i swear i dodged that and somehow it would still hit me so no i get that uh i will say maybe this is something gonna pitch later but it seemed pretty glitchy yeah there was there was we had like like, okay, uh, my friend Michael had brought it over, and he had, like, a video already on his PlayStation of him dying to nothing. <laughs> there was just, like, these blocks in front of him. That it he was wasn't, just glitching. Yeah, he wasn't anywhere near these these blocks that were, like, slamming together, but they, they were killing him. And then at one point, uh, the lighting effects were non-existent. Yeah, the um, game over screen, there's supposed to be this scary-looking mask in the darkness. Yeah, and but he was, was only supposed to see his eyes. But then at some point, they just turned off, and you could see him, and yeah, it wasn't was, that menacing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, but we haven't played much of it, because, like I said, someone brought it over. We just tried it out. Yeah, and... but we played a good chunk of it. I mean, I, I, if I'm counting right, I played about six levels, and it was a, a varying degrees. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Crash as a character, he's very animated he's very cool he looks i really like just how super he looks. polished yeah him and coco and tana and all those like bandicoot yeah. characters I, I really like their designs i still think this game really holds up i mean again aside from the temple run levels i think those are a little dated but to be honest the levels themselves are maybe two three minutes long you know you and know, they and they you know they're fine you know what's funny too is like I, I was playing that game and i was getting this feeling of like like man, like when's the last time I played a game and it was like this frustratingly like difficult? Yeah, you know, like it almost like an NES game. Like, I uh, I bought Ukulele in hopes that it would remind me of like an older game like that. But like, funnily enough, this is the one that was the uh, that had like the like all the colors are really bright and I like the the you know the main characters like this wacky like 
Yeah. And he did the, the what, what was it like when we got everything in the level? He did the everything yeah, in the he level does, dance. He does like yeah, and I was like, oh, that's almost like that's almost like Banjo in Banjo Kazooie. Like it just reminded me of a '90s like platforming game, and it made me very happy to play a game like that again. Yeah, it did. I mean, the the levels are, I mean, it suffers a lot from, uh, what do they call it? It's like um, if you haven't played this before, this is gonna get you. Like Beginner's Trap? Yeah, Beginner's Trap. It suffers a lot from them, but, I mean, it was Sometimes, early PlayStation. Yeah. This is why I kind of mentioned it at uh, on the Gunvolt part, is, like, please take away that whole lives thing. Because lives <laughs> are a carryover from arcade machines. And right. as much as I like arcade machines, those were designed to take your quarters. So that's uh -huh. why they have a lives incentive. Or the lives program. This would program. have been so much better if it was just retry, 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 retry. Because yeah. the whole thing with the lives was really dumb. It's like game over. I think they and were... we're just gonna go right back into right, it. It just right. seems I was just gonna say unnecessary. I think, I think there was a lot of things that they, they kept in there only because it was faithful to the original. It, like if they took out lives, I'm pretty sure people would have been like, Well, look at this fucking game for millennials. There's no lives anymore. You can't you know, you can't make games hard anymore or some it's shit. It's not like that, that it's but that's deceptively hard as, as opposed to actually hard. Sure. You know, it just... You, it, all the lives do is add two more steps to you going back into a level and trying to get again. Because not, like... I think most levels had one checkpoint. I don't right? mind lives as much as you do. Like, especially when I go back and play, like... Like, at one point we had, like, 50 lives. Like, I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal. But see, but doesn't that kind of exaggerate? It's like, you're collecting all these lives for what? You know, mm -hmm. but when you start up the game again, you're only gonna have three. Sure. It it just seems unnecessary. If you're just if if lives are gonna be such an easy commodity to get, what's the point of having them? Just like when you were in Super Mario uh, sixty four and you still had lives, but at some point you had like ninety nine lives, and you're just like, why do I have these? Yeah. You know, because it it's so easy to get a life. Uh huh. That sounds, that sounds deceptively deep for some reason. If it's so easy to get, uh, you know. A life in the game. What what's the point of them? Right. But again, I mean, it could go either way. Maybe people think that way. They're like, "Ooh, millennials, um, they need a challenge or blah blah blah." And that's that's it's fine, I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say it's only forty dollars too. Like, it's ridiculous. That whole trilogy is only forty dollars. Yeah. So it's like, if you have a PlayStation Four, why wouldn't you buy that? Basically. Yeah, and buy the digital version because it, you know trying to switch between these games and like it being a disc seems. That just they're seems on, like one of those. On one disc, they're not. No, I know, but he's like, just have them on your system. They just just be one of those things where you just go and yeah. play. Like, uh, I I do enjoy having games just on the console. Like, I I want to get Splatoon two next week, and I'm yeah. I'm, I don't know if I want the physical copy or if I just want it on my Switch because I do not just... want the physical copy. As as cool as it gets to be like to have an actual physical copy in your hand. Uh huh man is it just awesome just to be able to switch from like mario kart 8 back to zelda yeah exactly. and then go from zelda to like what uh, street fighter 2 and, and all, just all of the games them. that we bought don't have instruction booklets or anything no they're, they're just, just a blank. case with the <laughs> chip the only the, the one thing i did run into is i had to delete uh or quote unquote archive that's oh. their system now okay. instead of deleting systems it archives it oh, okay. so it keeps like a version of it on your system but it's much smaller and I do like that because I had to delete or archive snipper clips. Okay. Um, and uh, so I could download uh, the test fire for Splatoon 2. Wait, so you uh, you already ran out of memory on your Switch? Yeah. But then again, remember, I have Zelda. I have I have Zelda. I have Mario Kart 8, snipper clips. Yeah, okay. I got you. Uh, the only thing I don't have on there is um, 1, 2, 3, Switch. 1, 2, Switch? One two switch. Yeah, so you're and talking about the sequel. It's three four switch. That's very funny. Sorry. Um, anyway, that's uh, a good joke. You know they did. They, they actually <laughs> they had a Splatoon test fire actually. Yeah, I totally forgot about it. It was pretty it was... cool, but I, it's just more Splatoon. Like yeah, it, but I can't wait to play it, man, because I played the first test fire and I love 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 the motion controls on here because I can put the damn screen down. All right, sure. I love it, and right. I don't have to hold them together like. I just it's so good. It's yeah, so good. I I didn't want to write that down as a topic because I was like, there's not really much to say about it. it yeah, just, it's not out yet. You yeah, know? it's like ever you. I don't know what, what can you say about it. <laughs> Everyone everyone's gonna choose whatever Marina choices because everyone's in love with her. No yeah, one, <laughs> for the last week it's been nothing of that. Like 
for the last few weeks, I've been doing a little uh, Samus kind of... I've been drawing Samus, like, nonstop. Okay. And uh, because they announced her, like, two games at E3 or whatever a couple weeks back. But this week, when I was on my feet, it was nothing but her all over the place. Yeah, and everyone just... loves Marina. Everybody loves Marina. Oh, yeah. Last thing that we were going to talk about... Sorry there's no segue into this, but... Uh, we were talking. We we saw the Castlevania series on Netflix. Oh right. Uh, yeah. We were. Uh, I mean, it's video game related. Uh, so we had to watch it. Yeah. Of course, we had to watch it. Um, we're actually pretty split on this, though. Yeah. Okay. It's it's hard for me to judge it because it's only like four episodes, right? Right. But to me, I was like, there was a lot, a lot of setup for like. I don't know. Those first three episodes, I was like, nothing's happening, dude. Like, And let's just put a spoiler on this if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, sure. It's and not, it's in, to be honest, go watch it. It's only four And then come episodes. back and watch it. Because yeah. it's only four episodes, half right. hour each. Yeah. And to be honest, it's probably 22 minutes each, so two hours of right. your day. Yeah, like what I can say right off the bat, like the intro sucks. I was like, no offense to whoever did the music. When I oh, hear... the actual intro. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought ne- you meant ne- the introduction to the entire series. Oh, yeah, Netflix skips the intro, so you probably won't hear it more than once. Okay. But, like, when I hear Castlevania, that name to me is like, okay, this is going to have badass music, you know? Some organs, some yeah. like, ancient sounding. Yeah, uh, just in organ. Yeah. Like, I... I, I can... I'll do, I'll do this in editing, but it's like, I'm going to give you an example of Super Castlevania... Okay, and listen to that. It. <laughs> listen to that for a second, okay? And then I'm gonna put up the intro to the new Castlevania, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you which one portrays, uh, you know, vampires and skeletons and right. gothic architecture. Okay. Okay. Well, intro aside, because to be honest, I didn't I didn't pay much attention to the intro other than it said like, oh, written by Warren Ellis, uh, and and to be honest, the name didn't jump out at me at first. Uh-huh. Only after like I think on the fourth episode, I was like, Warren Ellis, that name sounds familiar. Looked him up. Uh, he's a pretty well known comic book character, uh, comic book writer. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff for Marvel and DC, okay. but I think what he's known best for in video games was he wrote uh, Dead Space cool and so uh when i saw that i was like oh the demons in in castlevania when yeah. he fights them in episode four they look a lot like the the i think they're called necromorphs in dead space okay so there's a lot of like back and forth between them. i was like oh that's why it looks so blah, blah, blah. plus the he's pretty well known for writing like hyper violent cartoon or comic books i guess that explains that part because yeah. okay to get to get into the actual show simon belmont to me was kind of like Trevor. I'm so, okay, it's it's Trevor. It's Trevor Belmont. Trevor Belmont. I was like, he just seems a little too typical, like, anime, like, oh, he's he's drunk, but he can fight good. Like, I've seen this so many fucking times. Like, are you kidding me with this, right? Right. At first. They're more and more, in, as the show goes on, I'm like, okay, he has a real motive. Right. You know, like, they 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 said, fuck the Belmonts, we don't want you here, and now they're, they're all dying. They're like, no, we need somebody to save us. Right. I get that. 
just at first I was kind of like, are they really doing this? Like, well, like, it, I don't. Well, it's it's funny because when I saw that, I was like, oh, I understand. Like, throwing it back to kind of historical here in the U.S., uh, we had the Salem witch trials, right? Um, because uh, they they suspected witchcraft and blah blah blah. Right. The Belmonts were the family that defeated the vampires, but if you remember, the Belmonts also used small forms of sorcery mm-hmm. and were that's why they were thought, cast out or whatever they because they thought they were superhuman okay and all of that is against god like there's a huge huge motif of of good and evil on here in in such like small nuggets and then just big huge parts because i love here, here's the parts that i loved the very beginning sets up a, just like in spider-man homecoming they set up the bad guys justification very well sure because Dracula, at this point... They fuck up his wife. They, they fuck burn up, her. No, they don't just fuck up his wife. They fuck up the one person on this on this earth who has treated him as a human being. Right, because it's his son says that, right? He's just... Right, but not, because, but not because she's done anything wrong, but because she was trying to help them. Mm-hmm. Because, like, science to them was scary. Yeah. But really, um, the, uh, the bishop at the time... He was using that, uh, he was like, we need to keep this world pure. But his motives were, we need to keep these people stupid. That's what, Because if we keep them stupid... That's the kind of stuff that was kind of like... Okay, let, let, me just, let me just say this too. This show was like extremely overhyped for me. Like all over Twitter, people were just like, oh, okay, like, oh my so. god, Castlevania is so fucking good. Or like, oh my god, look at this gif of Castlevania, it's so good. And all this shit and... There were just these tropes that I I, I I saw immediately that I was like, are they, this show's supposed to be really good. Are they really just going to do this? Like the whole like, oh, this really religious guy, like the really scary religious guy that's like, you know, turning people or whatever. Like, okay. No, but that's, that's what I liked about it. It kind of turned it on his head because he, in the end, he really did believe he was doing what God wanted. Sure. Okay. Because, um, because, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me just, let me just point out the other tropes. Uh ultraviolet like scenes of gore like sure i just want to say like ultra violence in anime does that do anything for anyone really like if you're a fan of gore do you really like cartoon violence does it really do anything for you it's not like it's not like oh my god i'm gonna look away from these drawings you know like if like shock value wise okay. it doesn't really do I, anything. I, under- I understand that I understand so, so that. in that aspect i'm like why does it need all the, like where are the skeletons? Like I, I they're they're not in Dracula's castle yet. Well, well, okay, yeah, true, that's true, but I guess this is appealing more to the people that played the later games or something. But I I guess if you're gonna say that, it's like why did they tease this series with the fucking Nintendo? You know, like well, as as somebody who loves Castlevania yes. one and three, it's like. I want to see skeletons. I want to see like panthers. I want to see like. Well, they teased it. They teased it with the Nintendo thing because they pulled the story and it's it's characters from directly from the video game from Part Three, right? Right. From... Because when like for example the 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 girl that he meets, Cipher or something. Uh, yeah, Cipher. I, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her name, uh-huh. uh, but it's it's along those. Yeah, lines. she's in Part Three. She's in Part Three, and you meet her, and you get her as a companion when you defeat a Cyclops. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happens in the in the in the oh, okay. in the series. Yeah, yeah. She defeats the Cyclops that's holding her captive, and then he and then she joins that is, the party. That is one of the parts. Where that I was is like, okay. Her, I was and I was gonna say that is one of the parts that I was like, wow, something happened. Look at this. You know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> something's finally going on. And, and the same thing with uh, and again, sorry about the spoilers, but um, Trevor meets up with Alucard and in the game you meet up with Alucard and you have to beat him and then he joins your troop. Yeah, that that fight was actually really cool but again, I was just like, it's like fucking like three episodes of not, like I get it. Yeah. You gotta stretch it out because it's series, okay. Like, gotcha. Um, the, the one thing I will say is they X'd out Grant which, I mean, it's Grant who gives a shit, you know, he's, uh-huh. he's a thief with a knife and his power in the game was he can walk on walls. So it was like, I don't care. Maybe they'll add him later on, maybe not. But it's like like they turn him into like this monster, and then when you beat him, he turns back into a human. Who's Grant? The little guy that can walk on the ceilings and stuff. Yeah, I just said. oh yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a thief who can walk on the ceilings and everything, and he has like a dagger. That's his. What did they do to him? You said I'm sorry, I wasn't. They turned him into like some sort of monster. Okay, okay. And then when you you know beat him, blah blah blah. 
Um, I, I did like it because it did those references. It did the whole, um, you know, he starts off in a village. It, he d- essentially starts off where they are, which is, uh, I forget the name of the town, but they, they are, they are continuing the series as it is, you know, and it's, it's, I, I don't know why they call part three Dracula's curse, because what's funny is that part two, which is Simon's, uh, quest. Simon's quest actually is, is, uh, Simon trying to get a curse lifted off of him. Mm-hmm. So that should be called Dracula's curse, but it's called Simon's quest. Anyway. I, I really liked it too because there was a lot of build up. It wasn't just action all the time. I understand that you don't like that whole oh he's he's a, in a bar and you know he's getting he's, he's really a, good even though he's drunk. But it had like these super anime vibes, man. Like like I tried to watch Attack on Titan, you know, everyone was You kept quoting that. Everybody was all over Attack on Titan when it came out and I was like, "All right, I'll give it a shot, you know." If I it, didn't uh, give it a shot. Well, right. So whatever. I watched the first episode and I was like, "Man, nothing is fucking happening." Like, I those things are big; they're like big naked humans. I get it. Like, what more setup do I need, really? Um, but then, like, three or four episodes in, people are like, "It gets good." Like that, you know, after a couple episodes, and I'm just, I'm just like, "Why? Like, what the fuck? Like, how much, <laughs> how much story do I really need? Like, these big naked dudes are out there. I don't give a shit. Like, where they came from? Just fight or something, you know? Like." <laughs> and then, and I had the same problem with this show. It's just like there were scenes where like, oh, it's ultra violent, and I'm just, I'm just like, okay, but what See, is that? What is that doing? What is the main character? Do, you know, like maybe, maybe it's maybe it's me from like there's there's been comic books and movie and like animes where I've seen where ultra violence it does get to me. Like when they show when they show the little kid getting torn apart, or they show a mom and a kid getting separated, and the kid gets killed, and the mom gets ripped apart and split in half. Those do affect, like, there is some shock value there because I was like, somebody had to animate that. Sure. You know, and, and then, you know, you understand that in this world, you know, uh, there's a suspension of disbelief that you have to put yourself into these, you know, things. And in this world, this is happening. I don't know. People just... are scared. They, they're, they're looking to the church. The church has always been their way, blah, blah, blah. The, that part, though, was very surprising where Belmont calls out the because uh, okay so in the in the town yeah i know in the town there's okay okay. okay. right but i'm just trying to set it up yeah go in the the town uh the the church is basically taken over and the church essentially has these priests that might as well be thugs and they are blaming all these things that dracula is doing to them like these attacks on these guys called there's these group of people who go around um and try to help people right asifi is part of this group um, and they they travel along uh, the speakers. Sorry, that's what they're called. The speakers. The speakers. Oh and yeah. They, they travel around. They travel around they're and like try magi- to help people. Yeah, yeah they're, they're yeah. magicians. No, to some Sci-Fi extent. is a magician. Or Sci-Fi something. is in it. Yeah. So when they corner this old dude, they're gonna kill him. Blah, blah blah. He helps them. At some point, Belmont calls him out. And he's like, Oh, he's like, Why do priests carry around daggers? And he's like, Why does that priest have a dagger? Blah blah. blah. The whole township gets. He's like, And you didn't have any problem punching that old man. How about you punch me instead? And all of a sudden, the, the town is turning on him. And then he's like, You and me right now. I have a short sword. You have a you have a long sword. You and me right now. And then out of nowhere, the villagers just like skewer this guy. Oh yeah, they start stabbing him. They start stabbing him with all these pitchforks and blah. I was like, Whoa, that was fast. Um, that part surprised me only because I thought it would be like. Oh, he gets away, and he's gonna be like another. That dude okay, that but that ended like that, and I was like, "Wow, they they took the church thing out of there quick." Like I thought it was gonna be the entire series. Okay, but I you understand that something like that, I don't mind that being ultra violent just because it actually did something for the story. No, you know? but that's that's what I mean. I didn't. It was unexpected to me. It did, and plus they hid after that first stabbing. Uh huh. I think they hid the rest because like people just kind of covered him over and then yeah. he was like oh i'm dying blah, blah. yeah so it, it wasn't even ultra violent it was just surprising that and it even took trevor by surprise He's like well that was fast blah blah, blah. Mm-hmm. so the church part of it is completely gone at this point that was just to set up like a motivation for the rest of the film or for the rest of the series uh-huh. and um i have to say episode four i think you really liked it for two reasons one it had some actual action in it just watch the last 15 minutes of the fourth episode and i think you're good like, but no, you no have to offense, watch. No offense to the whole series, but it's just a lot of talking. And <laughs> I, I remember when that f- first episode ended, I was like, "Okay, like I that last that last fight sequence is probably some of the best um, 
fighting I've seen and, and did you like I slowed down some parts they use a lot of blur in it the, like a lot of blur animation which isn't common nowadays but wow it was pretty uh huh like especially with that long sword mm-hmm. they, they had a lot of that you're talking just, about at the end of episode 4 yeah at the end of episode 4 when he yeah. meets Alucard uh huh and I like the introduction of you Alucard. No, like I that's why I don't another reason I didn't want to be too hard on the show is like I don't know what the budget is like. I don't know if this was rushed out. I don't know if they had deadlines to me. Like they anime, do have deadlines. <laughs> it's powerhouse animation too. It's a local it's a local yeah, animation studio. So it's like not probably not people that are familiar with anime style or something cuz you know it's going to get compared to shows that have like Sure, sure. Of course like, it is, but I mean, way I think bigger it's well written. And... I mean, they're essentially doing the Castlevania story. Mm-hmm. So they can only do so much with it. Right. Uh, like I was saying, it's just... When I hear Castlevania, I'm thinking certain things. Yeah. And the show didn't really, like... It didn't really hit those points for me. Um, mainly, like, the music. I just, like... I will, I will give it to you on the music, a, because there was... a fucking organ. Like, <laughs> that is, that's Castlevania, you know? Like, okay, I... I'm I'm staring at a poster of the first Castlevania game. The cover of the Castlevania game. I have it up in my room because I love that that first uh, game so much. Uh, just this picture of Simon looking at the castle, and you can't see his face because it's like that's you. You're supposed to insert yourself into that game. You're just a lone warrior fighting Dracula. Like that's what it's about to me. You're in you're in this castle all by yourself, and it's just. It's just you versus the the world, you know. You no, know, I get that, but that's another reason they didn't. I think they didn't choose that version of it, right? Because because there's nothing to that. Part like, three lends itself more to like a journey, kind of. A... Well, right, because there's there's more of a character development in it. This one is essentially this is the old you know knight versus the dragon scenario. He's like, that guy's good, that guy's bad. There's no, there's no the reason. First Castlevania yeah, saying. yeah, because Dracula is a bad guy. Boom, you're done. Yeah. Like there's no there's no talking about it, there's no story. You show up, you crack your weapon, you let's go. Maybe that's what I was expecting then, more just cut and dry like Yeah, but there's okay, there's not much meat on that bone, man. Let, like, let, let like, me let me say this too. When I heard it was four episodes, I thought okay, so that's it. Like they just did oh, four no, episodes it's... of a mini series and that was it. Maybe they're an hour long, but it's not. So they they're releasing these four and episode four ends with them starting Castlevania. The Castlevania, basically. Mm-hmm. So, it's just a lot of... It's which just, uh, which I'll say again, to its credit, that is how um, the game works. Mm-hmm. Like, you can take these different... In Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, you go to these different places, you yeah, meet you these guys. Yeah, you can take different paths. And you can take different paths. You don't even have to get all of the, um, the dudes. And if you take the wrong one, you're fucked, because that game is super hard. It is really hard, and if you don't know where you're going. But at some point... You get to Dracula's castle with your companions. Yeah. You know, so if you didn't, if you chose, uh, like, if you only chose to get uh, the the chick and Alucard, then you're kind of screwed because Grant has certain things you need to do. Like, I love that it's being faithful. I love what they're doing with it so far. The fight sequences were great. I, I personally like Trevor's quirks. Okay. Because, again, like, in the very beginning, he is, he's like, I've... He's like, I've never lost a man or a beast. And then they just kick him in the crotch. I just and then they like, throw him out. He's like, you bastards. And something blah, blah, blah. about his character design, too, is just a little bit... It's plain. Like, it, it does... It almost reminds me of the guy from Attack on Titan. Just, like, black hair that's, like, kind of shaggy. I'm like, how many fucking animes have this? You know, like... Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna look at this Castlevania poster again. It's like a brawny, Hercules-looking dude. And that's what I, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah, but... Again, you're you're lending yourself to some like that game lends itself to that because at that point because mm-hmm. remember this is Trevor Trevor is coming back mm-hmm. or or is being drawn back after years of being out of training he makes it a point to say that a lot and he's like I'm rusty yeah I've done this in a while oh I still got it blah blah, blah. he right. keeps saying that and it's a joke and blah 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 but that Simon is the one that they've like they've been training that guy he is their guy and he's just gonna go there and you know. Fuck shit up. That guy seems lonelier than uh, than this guy. <laughs> what do you mean? That guy seems like he has no training because he's just by himself. But yeah, but I... look at he's freaking stacked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just he starts with the whip. He doesn't even need armor. Mm-hmm. He's just he's good to go, man. I, but I was... uh, like I said, Trevor Trevor is like uh, 
Trevor's an interesting character just because he has this whole family legacy. He but he still wants to help. Uh yeah, um so yeah, like I I know it's only four episodes. I I hope they just make use of everything that they have because Castlevania is something that has a full arsenal, literally a full arsenal of weapons to choose from and yeah. all sorts of stuff like the only thing he uses in the show right now is the whip and the short sword, right? Yes, and the daggers. The, the, yeah, the dagger and the whip. But they have, like, holy water, they have the clock. They he have used the... Ho- well, he used holy water with the peasants. Oh, he did? Yeah, because remember, even... he's like, who's an actual priest? And the guy's like, oh, okay. He's like, go to the well, get me some holy water. Oh, and yeah, then, yeah, remember, yeah. they threw it you're right, on you're the right. floor. Yeah. yeah, I remember that now. Okay. And she has her ice powers. I mean, they, they, they use it, but they don't go, like holy water and they don't throw it out and blah 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 they, they're real subtle about it the only thing he didn't use i will give you this the axe no that's what i'm saying yeah they, they still have room for other things like they have the axe oh, sure yeah they have the axe they have the the, the cross boomerang they oh, have yeah, a lot of different stuff too, yeah yeah they, cool. they, they definitely have a lot to work with and i think it's gonna get really good because i got really amped up at the last part we see all three of them walk out only problem i have uh-huh. only problem i have in the whole thing but this is more about vampires is like why do all vampires gotta be shirtless like why why is that a thing yeah it's like he's shirtless he's got his pants down to where you can almost see like his thing he's got long hair and he and he and he's just like i don't know he's like i mean that's something like that's more or less what i was saying there's like these certain tropes that it's following that i i just i just thought it would like from what i heard like all the hype from this show i was thinking like it's gonna do something different it's gonna surprise me but there's there's these things that it sticks to, and I just... yeah because like like it has it it stuck with it because in the game manual like um he he they describe Alucard mm-hmm. and how he is long hair blah 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 and even Sephia they they tell they say um, they say she's boyish okay because it's it's safer for her to travel that way so that's why she looks a certain way in the game and in the in the thing like it's like if they don't think there's an attractive girl in the bunch they'll leave them alone. Okay, you know, sure. So there's, Whatever. there's certain things, um, but I will say like Trevor's design seemed natural. I mean, like he doesn't cut his hair, he's, he's, and he just has a big coat on so he can hide weird. himself. It's yeah, it's just a bunch of lines. It's like a zigzag <laughs> line. I was like, that looks kind of stupid. Like, I get it, animating's hard, but it just I don't know. animation's hard, man. Uh, I did like the joke where he tried to kick Alucard in the nuts. Oh, yeah. That part was very fun because it was a callback to the first episode. Yeah, where he he's like, "This is a that. bar fight. Have some dignity," and then just headbutts him. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It shows. Um, it shows that all three of them have like a distinct personality. And I gotta say, I can't wait till they explore Alucard. Uh huh. Because they only show him in the first episode and in the last one. Something else about that last shot when they're walking away. Yeah, he he put some the, clothes on for the first time in the series. I was like, "Wow, the colors look good." Because, like, it's so hard to critique this because it's only four. But just look at Castlevania 1. Like, there was beautiful colors there. It was still scary, but there were still beautiful colors there. Actually, like, just in the cover, it's a rainbow, dude. Yeah, it's like, it looks really good. And I just... I'm not trying to compare it to Attack on Titan again, but, like, sometimes I see these, like, bland, like... Like, it's overly red, or it's, like, overly some color, and I just think, like, why can't... I get that it's supposed to be scary, but red isn't, like, the only color you can use. You can use other things, Yeah, Trevor's things, just kind know? of in brown, Sophia's blue, and then Alucard ends up being black, and I think he has a little red cuffs. Yeah, them right? together, like I said, at that at that last scene, I'm like, okay, it's starting to look a little more colorful and, mm-hmm. and lively. But just you know, those first couple episodes, I was like, I've just been looking at brown for fucking <laughs> for like an hour and a half. There's just been nothing exciting to and look at. And what's funny is that's that's so funny that you mentioned the color scheme. Is like the first three episodes are brown, uh-huh. and then the last episode everything's blue. Yeah, it's because like because that's when it turns. Warning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, once the church is out of there, all of a sudden everything's a clear blue when it used to be like a hazy. Brown. Right, right. So that's another reason why I'm like, it's, it's, maybe, it's, maybe when it pans out, you know, the color yeah. theory kind of you know. By the way, did you out more. did you like? I mean, I noticed it, but I loved, loved, loved that um, when they fall deeper into Dracula's castle, quote unquote, which is actually Alucard's castle. Okay. There's a scene where there's all these gears. Yeah, it's, and I like that is a throwback to the cartoons. 
or the cartoons, the the video game. Yeah, because I'm like that clock one of those tower, last right? level, of the clock tower thing. I was, I was like, like that always, is so cool. They always have to have clock tower shit. So, but I was remember, like, cool. Alucard's, uh, if I remember correctly, isn't Alucard's, um, his his is built upside down in terms of like how his father's is built. His I don't is built know upside actually. Down. I don't know too much. Like I said, I played I played one and three, and I know whatever you can get from those games basically. You know, as as you know, I've I've played a lot of them. I know red including... skeletons regenerate. That's what I know. <laughs> I've played a lot of them. Uh, uh, part four, I think, is probably the funnest to play. Part four uh, is super good, but... but it's fun to play. It's it's not the best one, but I it's the the one that I play the most. Uh huh. Because it's just so, like like you said, it's so much fun to play. Um, I even played those new ones, but that Kojima had a hand in. Oh, Lord of the Lords Shadow. of Shadow, which by the way, the first the first one was decent. The first one's story is really good. Uh huh. Um, the battle system is. It's okay. okay. Um, it gets a little like it, it suffers from that same part of like why do you have all these choices when you can just use this? Yeah, the Castlevanias definitely had their highs and lows because because you know the highs I think people would agree is like um, Symphony of the Night. Right. Uh, I personally love the DS version. That okay. So this is. That was that was my other concern. I was like, I know a lot of people. Castlevania to them is Symphony of the Night, so I was worried that this show might, you know, pander more to that type of audience, where it's right. like they look a little more anime ish. You know, there's more magical powers than there is just straightforward whipping. No, that was uh, a lot of whipping. Yeah, so a like, lot of whipping. Because also, I was like, why would they fucking advertise it with a Nintendo if it's not going to pander more to people like me? Yeah, right? well, you know, like so. I, I mean, I think. I think the fact that they're sticking, like, they are glued to that story uh-huh. of the Nintendo. Uh-huh. So whatever it describes in that booklet, you guarantee yeah. to be in it. So, I mean, that's why they're being super faithful to it. And I'm so glad they did that one as opposed to Symphony of the Night. Sure. Because it's like, Trevor's a human. Uh-huh. Alucard's a vampire. Like, there's not, there's so much, there's only so much I you can... I haven't played Symphony of the Night, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> um uh if you have a ch- uh i was gonna say lord of shadow one is actually not canon so yeah i heard it's play its that, own timeline it's... right yeah because the beginning of the bloodline is gabriel belmont okay and in in this version which is the anime version he's the freaking vampire killer and he passes it down and blah 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 in that version, uh, spoiler alert for lords of shadow fans okay uh gabriel becomes the first dracula Oh, okay. It's actually very, very... Like I said, the, the, the way that he becomes Dracula is very cool. Okay. Uh, and then part two has Trevor... Or actually... Are those games any good? They're... I, I would say part one is good. I heard part the one D, was, the, was The DS good. one uh-huh. is way more faithful to Castlevania's. I heard it was a piece of shit. The... What? I heard the, the Mirror 3D- of Fate? Yeah, I heard the 3DS one was like the worst game ever made. What? No, you get to play as three different people, too. Okay, the second one. And then the second one is a piece of garbage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is funny because like I was waiting forever for that game and then they're like, it's a piece of garbage. All right. like, I didn't even, and I didn't even play it. I just read about the synopsis online. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, oh, it connected all three, three uh, games. That's cool. Well, but in the end, I was like, oh, man. And I played the Mirror Fate one because the Mirror Fate one is just like, it's just old school. It's just old school Castlevania. Side I mean, scroll in action. Sure. I, yeah, but like, there was, there was a lot of 3DS games that did that too. That Okay, like, for, as an example, like, there was a Batman Arkham game that came out on 3DS that got critically panned. Everyone was like, it's a piece of shit. Well, Same thing it with, was. Same thing with Shinobi on 3DS. Everyone was like, the game's a piece uh, of shit. What did they expect Shinobi to be on 3DS? I don't know, but that, but what I'm saying is like it was like these dumbed down ports that probably didn't get a lot of work. You know. Well, like what's funny is it did that that particular one mm-hmm. did so well that they moved it over to a console release. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know then. Maybe maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, well, I mean, just if if you get a chance, to play it. But you know, sure, I'll check it out. Uh, by the way, is if you've ever cared about the timeline for castlevania it's really great the, the whole timeline thing like when they set up the families and blah blah blah. it's actually pretty fun uh because they actually it's funny the alucard is actually was invented by the dracula movies that were released by universal are you talking about like timelines as in what 
a timeline as in you know Dracula uh-huh. from the Universal Monsters. Yeah, with the... he does actually have a son called Alucard. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. And and so there's... you're saying they pull a lot from the actual Dracula mythology. Yeah, and okay. Grant Morris, I believe, is one of the people that. Um, is in those movies as well okay sure yeah yeah and they use him in the timeline well yeah the first castlevania game right the the ending credits is like a bunch of uh yeah it's a bunch of puns the the names are like a bunch of parodies of like (laughs) real universal monsters yeah Yeah, yeah, something like that right well it's just it's fun to if you ever get a chance uh it's way funner than the zelda timeline that's for sure but uh it's fun to take a look and see how they all line up so the references to a real life and stuff that's cool yeah yeah because it's it's just kind of fun you know, especially with the the whip. How does Hotel Transylvania fit into the timeline? Uh, it's not. Okay. Uh, because Adam Sandler can eat a... <laughs> <laughs> you don't like him, huh? I like him. You know what? The whole thing about... <laughs> I like Hotel... I'll, say, I'll only say this about Adam Sandler. He is a rich, successful man that does whatever he wants, and God bless him. Yeah, you know... I, okay, we're going to wrap this up right now. Right. That's well, all I'll, I'll say about him, because my <laughs> wife loves Adam Sandler. All I was gonna, I, all I was gonna say about that was, uh, I think Adam Sandler's one of those things like, uh, like Sonic Adventure Two. Man, I had, I was, I really liked it as a kid, but I play it now and I'm like, I see why people hate this game. <laughs> and it's the same with like, which sucks because I actually did like Hotel Transylvania. I, no, I, no, I, what I was gonna say is like, I go back and see a movie like Big Daddy, and I'm like, I understand why people hate this guy and why he's not funny anymore and all that shit. So I, I have, it's funny. I have friends who'll defend him. Like, oh yeah, dude. People, and I'm like, people love him. He's like, he's a funny guy. I was like, you know what? I'm glad you still enjoy those. Fuck, like, I saw that movie. <laughs> I saw that movie on, he has on Netflix. What is it called? The Do Over? Yes. The one where he's like a. He's a spy. He's a spy or something. And he's. He's defending. He's defending uh, so, David Spade. It is so fucking bad, dude. It is not good in any way. There's, <laughs> there's no redeemable qualities about that movie. It's dog shit and before you say anything that i'm like prejudiced against adam sandler because like i i watched like happy gilmore or whatever beforehand let me just tell you this if you say if you tell me like oh you're you're 2000 and and 2000 below adam sandler back when he did happy gilmore and billy madison and you've never watched his new stuff he's like no steven here is my witness i have been watching adam sandler movies like even the cartoon version which was eight crazy nights i like that movie uh <laughs> that serious one where it was about his family being lost in the twin towers rain over me i okay. saw spanglish i saw punch drunk love i've seen so you blended gave, you, uh, like, gave no, him, you gave him a fair chance i gave him i went to go i paid money to see you don't mess with the zohan oh god i paid money to go see bedtime stories nice uh i i have watched so many adam sandler films and I have tried to enjoy him only because I remember enjoying him so much as a kid. I know it's a, it's a shame, like. Uh, <laughs> but again, great! I am so glad that he gets to just make movies with his friends and yeah. do whatever he wants. I, I like Billy Madison. It's a I shame. don't want to watch anything to do with it. <laughs> and it's a shame that the same person that made Billy Madison made Pixels and Grown Ups. Grown Ups, yeah. too. like I watched Grown Ups. <laughs> I. Just, I under, like, like I think I think I'm coming into your camp where I'm telling you like I understand why people like this but I I just yeah like our nephew loves click yeah I watch click yeah oh yeah people, I don't want to see click people anymore people really like that movie I know they do um so there you go uh he freezes time and kicks this guy in the nuts a hundred times yeah that's it <laughs> that's, that's it. the joke that's the joke all right people. so. <laughs> Uh, fuck Adam Sandler. That's all we wanted to say, real fast. No. Uh, Why did that become a thing? How did we get here? I don't. I'm not sure actually. But uh, yeah, uh, we, we got to wrap anyway. this up. Uh, so that was this week's episode, guys. Uh, if you watched Castlevania, uh, let us know what you thought. Uh, yeah, just in comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know who you agree with more. Let us know which episode was uh, was browner. <laughs> was. Uh, which episode Tell happened? us which uh, Attack on Titan thing compares to Castlevania yeah. more. <laughs> so, some, so, sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. See you next week, guys.